What's going on guys? Justin Fuller here. And today I'm at San Marcos Toyota here in San Marcos, Texas, home of the Bobcats. Eat them up. Anyways, we are getting these guys set up for all three of True Spots products. That means the ability to track their keys in the cars on the retail side, tracking keys and cars on the service side, and then using True Recon, our recon tool, allowing them to see how long the car spends in each step of their process and the overall process. So let's hop on in and show you what it looks like. So if you want to start tracking your keys in the cars, the first thing we're going to have to do is set up a network. And the network is going to consist of a couple things. On the outside of the dealership, we're going to typically use these solar-powered gateways. They don't require any power. They're solar-powered. It holds two months worth of charge, uh, so you don't have to run lines or anything like that. As you can see right behind me right now, Ali is actually putting one up on the light pole. Ali, turn around and wave. Wave to the people, Ali. There we go. Right? So that's what we're going to set up on the outside of the dealership so that you can see those keys in those cars as they float around the lot. Now, on the inside of the dealership, we're going to use these interior gateways. Now, these are going to allow you to see those keys and cars as they float around inside the buildings, inside of service space, inside of detail, places like that. So these two items are what we're using to create that network, and they're all going to talk to a base station, which looks a lot like a wireless router that will typically tuck away somewhere nice and high. Once we've got all that set up, now you can start tracking your keys and cars. So let's talk about the hardware that we're using for that. So first off, I want to start you with keys. Now, these guys use a keeper system as far as a key machine goes, right? So they'll typically have these pegs that connect up to a set of keys. Now, what we're doing is we're connecting our tracker to this plastic key fob piece right here. So when they sell their car, they can simply remove the keys from this, connect up a new set of keys, and then reprogram this to track those. So basically what I'm telling you is you can reuse these over and over and over again, right? So any key machine, whether it's Keeper, One Micro, Matrix System, a uh, key track, or maybe you're just using a pegboard, it'll work for all these guys, right? So key wise, that's what we're using. Now, if you want to track something outside of a key, maybe you want to do like a golf cart key, a golf cart, maybe you want to do a dealer plate, big one. Maybe you want to do jump boxes that, you know, that move around a lot. Note that you can use these on that as well. And when we hop over here to the, uh, the phone app, I'll show you kind of what that looks like, but know that we can use this outside the norm. So if you have some of those items that grow legs and walk away, know that we got you. Now, when it comes to the vehicles, there's gonna be a couple different options that you have. The first being just a classic tag that you throw around the rear view mirror, right? Those around the rear view mirror, it's gonna track the vehicle and let me know where it is on the campus, right? And it's got a QR code on the back that I'll explain a little bit when we hop to the phone up as far as how do I connect a specific stock number, much like this brand new uh, Tundra that I'm sitting in, to this exact tag. Now, outside of the normal tag, I also offer this with motion sensing alerts, meaning it has an accelerometer in it. So if theft is an issue at your dealership or a concern, or maybe you just have a couple high-end cars that you really wanna protect a little bit more, know that I offer this as, as a, an, an addition as well, right? So that way, if somebody tries to steal the wheels off it, somebody tries to steal a Cadillac converter, or they try to steal the whole dang car, you can get an alert. The minute this shifts in the car, you get a push notification, and then you can go through your steps as far as security, whether it's pulling up cameras, alerting your security uh, company, whatever that might be, right? So two different versions of this tag. Now, outside of that, I do have an OBD2 device, which will track on and off campus. Pretty cool. It also will provide you with some additional information related to the vehicle. Uh, and of course, if you pull this out of the OBD2 and threw it over in the floorboard, it'll still track for two more weeks. So very cool. So if you're looking to track on and off campus, you may want to use these, or maybe you just want to use these for test drives, right? I have a couple places where they put them in just a few cars, or they use them in courtesy vehicles, you know, loaner vehicles, things like that. Um, so you can mix and match, guys. You can do a, a blend, right? <clears throat> maybe I want classic tags, and then I just want a couple of the accelerometer ones on the cars that I park, you know, my driveways to block in at the end of the night. Uh, and maybe I got a couple high-end cars that I want to put these in to give it more trackability, right? Um, so all these different ways you can do it. Now, San Marcos Toyota actually uses Apex, which is an F&I uh, sell to product, right? Allowing you to track the vehicle on the campus and off the campus. So they use it as far as uh, lot management. And then when the, when the car is leaving, right, you can upsell it to your customer uh, and provide them that additional safety. Well, TrueSpot happens to integrate with Apex, giving us the ability to pull that information in. So for these guys, they're gonna be able to look up a stock number on our app or our desktop dashboard, see where the key is at and where the vehicle's at all in one place. So it's gonna make everyone more efficient, cut down on that time of searching for keys and cars and allow them to use that time selling. So let's hop into the phone app and I'll show you how that works. All right guys, so here we are on the phone app. So what I've done is I'm just mirroring my phone to the screen so that you can understand kind of what we're doing here. So there's two big things that we're gonna go over. One, how do I run a search? How do I find a key? How do I find a car? And then two, how do I connect up these tags to a specific vehicle, right? And we're gonna do that all from the phone, right? So very easy to do. So the first thing I wanna do is just run you through finding a key and finding a car. So it's that very first button that you're gonna see. So we're gonna go ahead and select that, right? We'll go to, what do we got here? This 2016 Buick Encore, right? 
or actually the 2016 Envision, since it's got the car in both keys. So we'll jump to that one, boom, pulls it up. It's gonna show me where the car is at, same thing. It's on the used car lot, we can already see that there on the map. If I hit that next button, boom, it's telling me where the key's at, key's in the keeper machine. I already know before I get over there, and then secondary key is also in the keeper machine. So both keys are tagged and in the keeper machine. Now, let's say this wasn't in the keeper machine. Let's say that the key was somewhere on the sales floor, right? It's in the showroom is what it lists out as, right? Well, I could get over here into the showroom. So once I get into this area, and you'll see yourself as a blue dot on the map. I'm not over at this dealership, I'm back in my studio. Uh, but I could hit this find a tag button that you'll see up on the screen here. If I hit that button, as I get closer uh, to this specific tag, the white ball that you're gonna see appear in the middle where you can see it thinking right now, it's gonna drop down to this darker blue, the immediate section. As I get further away, it's gonna go to the red. So this way, if I get over to an area and I'm like, all right, well, I know it's in this this vicinity, this, this you know, within 10, 20 feet of me here, but there's a million desks, right? Well, I could use this and start walking around and it'll walk me right up to that key. Uh, so this way, you know what I mean? If a key gets lost, you can take yourself right up to it. So know that this does get granular when it comes to keys to help you find exactly where it's at, right? So obviously I'm not there, so I'm not gonna find it, right? That's how running a search works, right? I think we can all get the general gist of that. So I'm gonna jump back to the home page here. Now the secondary button down here is the true tag management button that you're gonna see on there. Now that's gonna be for connecting tags, right? So tags. Uh, to cars. Um, so let's say that I wanted to jump in here and, you know, whatever the cars. We'll go with this 2017 or 2011 Acura, right? Let's say I was connecting a third key, right? Let's say it's one of those cars where they gave me like 19 keys and I want to I wanna track them all. So I take my tag. Now, we talked about this earlier on the back of the tags. There's a QR code and some numbers. So on here, I'm simply just going to hit that, that key button because I want to connect a key. So I go to there and then boom, on the back of that tag, like I mentioned, I can either type in those numbers and you'll see the numbers down here on the screen or I could just scan that QR code, right? So I'm gonna hit that, that scanner button and then just scan my, my tag, right? It makes life a lot easier this way. Boom, I can hit it, scan it, connect it, we're good to go, right? Same thing with cars. Now these guys are using Apex, so it's gonna automatically pull these across when they put that Apex unit in. Uh, but let's say for the sake of this, you're not using Apex, you're using my standard tags, right? Same thing on the back of these tags, guys. It's super easy. I got the QR code and I've got those numbers. So hit the car button if I wanna connect a car tag to it and then I can either type it in um, or I could scan it. Right? So the reason I mentioned I like using the phone to do this is because I can use that QR reader. If you're using a desktop, you're not going to have access to a QR reader, right? It's just not available to you. But you could still do it and just type in those numbers. But, you know, do you want to mess up and accidentally put a 1 as an L, a 0 as an O, that sort of thing? It'll happen, right? So I recommend that. And the other thing is, let's be honest, chances are you're sending a lot porter out to a truck. When it comes in, let's say it bought cars at auction or it's, uh, you know, new cars from the manufacturer, from the plant. Well, I could put a handful of these in each pocket walk out there and literally scan them and be like, all right, let's do the first car, boom, boom, connect this to the key, put this on the rear premiere. We're now tracking that car. So if it needs to go through recon, I can track it as it moves along. Um, or if it's new car and it just needs to go through a couple steps, I'm already tracking it. So if anybody takes the key over detail uh, before it makes it on the lot and they do something funky with it, we're not gonna be lost without it, right? We can track it down. So you can track keys and cars really quickly. Would I take 10 seconds to connect them both up? So throw a handful of these in both pockets, walk out to a car when it comes in, and you can track them, you can start tracking them. Immediately. All right, guys, so here we are on the desktop dashboard, and I'm gonna walk you through a couple different, uh, I'd say scenarios and, and staff members that could use this tool, right? So I wanna talk about sales managers as far as opening the closing duties. I wanna talk about inventory managers, and I talk about whoever manages like your third-party vendors like photo booth guys and things of that nature. But the first thing, I just wanna walk you through what you're seeing on the screen here. So the first thing right in the dead middle, uh, you're gonna see that network that we've established and then we've geofenced off all these different areas and named them. Uh, so the naming convention goes with the dealership and what y'all pick. Uh, so this will be custom to whatever the store picks, right? So employee overflow, uh, you know, employee back lot, uh, used car lot, new lot, right? So these are some of those searches that we ran and you saw where those vehicles were living up here, right? So it makes sense. Um, so this is kind of what you're gonna see and we can make this as, you know, as big as this massive field over here or as small as a tiny block that's one office, right? So there's different ways we can do this. So just understand that. Um, so that's kind of the network. Over here on the left, I can run any kind of search, right? Easy enough to do over there. Across the top, it's gonna show me my inventory. So as far as keys, new and used, uh, and then inventory, uh, pre-owned and new. And then on here, it'll show me, hey, you have 100 new cars that have been tagged, but you also have 25 that haven't been tagged. And it'll present me with that list over here of those 25 that have not been tagged, right? So very powerful in the sense of understanding what is tagged, that's kind of important. But what's more important to me is the guy who's managing this process, if that's my title, is well, what isn't tagged? What do we need to take care of? And at that point, I could pull up this list, simply turn off my map, export this list, and hand it to somebody and go, hey, I need you to go find all of these vehicles, right? Here's your stock numbers. I need to get these tagged. I need to make sure that we're managing this process correctly, right? So whoever's in charge of that, 
we can make this very simple for them. And the way we're able to do this is that tie in with the inventory feed so we can see what has a tag, what doesn't, what's living in your inventory feed. So easy enough to understand. Um, so across the top here, there's a bunch of uh, graphs and we're gonna go through some of those, but I just wanna talk about specific people and how they can use this tool. So the first being any kind of sales manager who's gonna be handling opening duties or closing duties. So the first thing I wanna start off with is at opening. So at the opening of the store, right, I wanna make sure that over the previous night, nothing was taken, right? Everything made it back into the store. So at that point, that's where I can look across these and I have, you know, a last sightings tab. And I have one for, for new vehicles and I have one for keys as well, right? So I should say all my vehicles and keys. Um, so that's where this is gonna kind of play a role. Right, so what I wanna do here is talk about last sightings as far as, you know, we'll, we'll do keys for just the sake of it since it's right here. So I have four that I can see on here and it'll present, right? So one of them's not showing here uh, that, that we haven't seen in the last 72 hours. So let's pretend for a second, instead of keys, this was my vehicles, right? Uh, which I can go to vehicles. I just don't know if you wanna see it's up on the side of the screen. So yeah, perfect, here. I've got one vehicle that hasn't been seen in the last 72 hours, right? So I could click into this vehicle, look and see if there's any notes. Maybe there's a note that says, hey, loaned it out overnight. Uh, sent it off for a recall, stop sell on it, you know, some some reason that this car would have left a lot and be elsewhere, uh, right? So, I mean, with Apex, these guys can see things on and off the campus, uh, assuming it has the Apex installed in it, but this is going to make life very easy for those guys who don't, right? I want to be able to get an alert each morning of any vehicle that hasn't been seen in a certain threshold of time. Uh, now, not only could I check this every morning, but I could also come to the back office, go to a user account, select my manager, so let's say Tyler's a manager, Go to Missing Vehicle Alerts, select this tab, and now each morning at 7 a.m., Tyler will get an email uh, with those vehicles that haven't been seen in X amount of time, right? You can decide that, and we can set up that, that threshold, right? So this way, each morning, as an opening manager, you can go, cool, I've got four cars here. All right, let me see. Let me open up my loaner notebook, or maybe I've got a board that I write this stuff out on. I can check, go, okay, that car checks off, that car checks off, that car checks off. But what about this one? I don't know what's going on with this one. Okay, we need to find this this vehicle or figure out what's going on with it. Let me see if somebody worked a deal or whatever, right? So this way I can put it a store together quicker and understand if someone has taken the vehicle in the middle of the night, right? Has the car left because it was stolen. Um, so very easy to use this to manage assets. Now the other side of that is let's talk about at close of business. How can I apply this, right? So right now we're looking at vehicles through the assets and I can turn on these pins and you can see where all of them are at. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch from vehicles over to keys. Uh, and when I do that, boom, now it's showing me every key that's tagged, right? I can see every single key on campus. Um, so at the end of a night, if I see keys like these ones out here, then I know that these keys haven't made it back in the building. It's potentially gotten dropped on the lot, left somewhere, something of that nature. So at that point, you know what I mean? I could go, okay, well, this is a service vehicle. I can just hover over it. Um, but, you know, if, it, if it's a stock number or something like this one, JP653695T, I could say, hey, David, come here, grab one of my sales guys. Hey, I need you to put this in your stock number. Go back to the employee parking lot because it's where this car is uh, and go find this go find this, this key, right? I think it's been dropped on the lot or left in a car, right? So this way we can make sure that any of these outliers make it back inside the building, uh, you know, at the close of business. So this way we're not leaving keys floating around and then maybe that key sits in that car for a week. We don't know, checked it out. Or we see, oh, Dave checked it out last, but that was, you know, a week ago. Well, hell. It could be anywhere by now. That car's maybe moved six times and you know eight people have checked out different things and all kinds of stuff. So you don't have to play that chasing game of chasing down a key. You can just see where they're at. Uh, so close the business, we can make sure this is all made it back in the building. And I can pull this up anytime, right? You could use this across the day. Um, so that's how you can use this at the close of business. Now, I wanna to talk to you about a couple other things. First being, let's talk about your photo booth guy. You know, everybody's got either an in-house guy or, or an outsourced guy that, that, that has to take photos for them. So what I want to do is go, okay, I've got this whole panel right here just for that guy. And I can see that 80 vehicles have pictures out of the 211. So I can click on that 131 remaining. So for him, this is great because he can see this in his app and go, okay, I have 131 cars to go find and take pictures of. Boom, I have a list. And as I knock them off and I add photos, guess what? They'll fall off this list. So now you don't have to make a list for him. He doesn't have to walk around and figure it out using your website. You can eliminate all that. I've just made this guy incredibly more efficient. Uh, and then two, I'm going to make him efficient again because... Now he can just simply go find the car, right? As he's scrolling through here, you know what I mean? Like he can be like, all right, well, I'm just gonna go look for this one or whatever it may be, right? Oh, okay, well, this one looks like the key is way out here nowhere. All right, well, something's going on with that. Uh, and I don't see the car, so maybe I don't start there or maybe I go ask a manager about that one, right? But I mean, I can click through any of these, right? To help make life a little bit easier. So, you know, I can see if these are service, right? And it's telling me on here, right? So he doesn't need to mess with those, uh, but he's looking for retail vehicles. Um, so this way we can make this guy more efficient. He can find keys, he can find cars, uh, and get his job taken care of. So this is just ways you're gonna apply this. And not only that, but I can jump over to this, turn the map off, and then through here we can sort. So now we can start sorting things, you know, uh, vehicle location, if I wanna do it by where these cars are at so you can stay bundled. 
and he can go through and find cards that are all in one location at once, or we do it by age, which is a little bit off your screen, but I can sort by age, and, and as someone who's managing this person, I could go, okay, well, the oldest vehicle that doesn't have photos is only 18 days old, so this guy isn't tuned too bad. He's keeping up fairly decent, maybe comes out once, twice a week, depending on how often you pay your guy to come out, but right, if I see cars that are 20, 30, 40 days old, then at that point, I go, all right, man, well, this guy didn't get the job done, uh, so just very easy to apply this process uh, and manage that person. Now, as far as running a search, you know, I'll show you what a search runs looks like, just so you can do that. So I'm gonna click into one of these boxes right here, uh, and then it'll present me with every car that's living inside of this geofence. So just know that that, that as well. Uh, so I have 19 cars sitting up in the used car lot, and I can click on one. Uh, and, and just like the app, right? It'll show me where the car's at, click on it, boom, it's gonna show me where it's sitting at. So it's probably sitting under this umbrella right here. Uh, and then boom, where's the, the key at? All right, well, one key is in the sales tower, right? So I know that, and then second key, sitting in the GSM's office. So I can see we're both over here on the map, right? But if I needed a, a label, it's telling me over here. Uh, so it'll tell me, it'll show me, and then if I got over into the building over here, right? You know, if I got into the, in this area and I couldn't find it, I could use that motor mode that we showed you earlier, that find a key, find a car button, and it'll walk me right up to it. Uh, so that way I can still find these. So it doesn't matter how, how you run the search. The big difference here on the search is that our search is a little bit more powerful on this desktop, and I'll explain why. Uh, but let's talk about old age units first, and I'll kind of walk you into that. So. On here, you can look at your old age units, right? So I wanna look at days in inventory, vehicles up here. Uh, so, you know, they don't have anything that's 90 plus days old because they're brand new, you know, we just got them set up. But let's say I go to 30 to 59 days old. Not only will it tell me in the number form here, but I can click on these pins and it'll show me where all these vehicles are living, right? So the cool thing about this is that I can see exactly where they're living. So if I have old age units, you know, these are all sitting in a retail area that they should sell. But if I had something that was sitting maybe back over here or back over here or behind, you know, service or something, then I would go, all right, well, we need to move that vehicle. How long has it been sitting there? There's a reason it's not selling, and it's because no one can see it, right? So this way I can take a look at my old age units and make sure they're in, in a retail area, right? Uh, in an area that's going to get highly trafficked because I want these cars gone immediately. So just a cool way that you can use this tool to view all of your old age units. Now, another way that you can kind of apply this uh, is, is I could run a search, right? So for the sake of this, I'm going to search out some Toyotas here, but I want to search multiple at once, right? So let's say I go to Toyota, and then we come down here to model and, you know, we do Forerunner or something, right? There should be a couple, at least one or two, right? Yeah, so I got two. Perfect example of what we were talking about here, right? So I've got two Forerunners. And as an inventory manager, I want all my Forerunners to be lined up together. Well, I got one sitting over here in the new lot where it should be. But what about this guy back here? I've got this car sitting back in the employee parking lot that needs to go somewhere. So at that point, you know, employee parking lot back lot, I can click on this box and it'll show me, or just I can look right here and go, okay, I need to grab this stock number. So let me go grab a lot portal, grab this stock number, go get this car to the back and move it back up front, right? So inventory management, keeping everything nice and tight, easy enough. I just manage this process without having to send a guy out to walk the lot and look for lost cars, then write them down, then come back in, then try to find the key and then try to do this. Man, we can do this all at once, right? You know what I mean? I can manage this and know, I already know where the car is that I saw it on the map and I know the keys in the keeper machine. Man, I can make this guy super fast, and he can use his app to go do this. Uh, as far as my lot management team, that's going to be you know moving this stuff around. So very easy to do this, right? Now the other side to that is, let's say I was running a specific incentive. Now I've only got two forerunners here, so let me grab a couple other vehicles just so we can try to get you know a decent you know grouping of vehicles. And let's pretend for a second that all of these vehicles um, were a, 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 the same type, right? So if all of these were forerunners. You know, and I had a specific incentive running where I have higher grosses that I can make because I have cash coming back that I don't necessarily have to do to tell the, the customer, well, I want to put all of these cars right by the front door with hang tags uh, that says, you know, ask about pricing or, we, you know, more flexible or whatever whatever I want to market it as because I want to sell these vehicles. I want I want to flip people off of other cars to these because I can make more money off. Them. So from that aspect, I could do that. And each month, as my incentives change, if I have a new car that I wanted to change, well, hell, go grab those cars, move them to a different spot, make sure they're somewhere, put hang tags, balloons, whatever you want to do, so that you can try to sell those cars and make the dealership more money, in turn, probably making yourself that percentage off of it, which would make you more money, right? So just ways that you can kind of manage this whole process uh, in a different fashion, right? I'm getting a, a, an overview of what's on the lot, where it's on the lot, uh, and, and being able to apply that to, to how can I sell better. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Lot Management 360, I'd be more than happy to hop on a call with you to explain pricing, demos, the structure, how we can set up your dealership, tracking just keys, just cars. There's a million different things that we can go over. Now, also remember, not only can we, can we track on the retail side, but we offer service tracking, and then we also offer a recon tool, which can take our tracking tags and let you know how long a, a specific car has been in a specific step of your process or the overall process and how long that's taking. 
So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Lot Management 360, Fixed Ops 360, or True Recon, I'll throw all my information up at the end of this video, along with a place to schedule a demo. Give me a call, text, or email. Other than that, appreciate you tuning in. Talk to you soon. Later, guys!